You're warming up for a match. It's not a sanctioned tournament, it's just a social match. You and your opponent are each taking your practice serves before your first service game, rather than both of you taking your practice serves before the match begins, as you would in a tournament, a situation in which you are not returning each other's serves. In the everyday non-tournament situation, when your opponent is taking his or her practice serves, you are returning those serves. At this point, you should be practicing your return of serve, and you probably are. You are probably standing at the baseline, maybe a bit behind it, maybe a bit in front of it. You hit the ball back to your opponent, and you stay where you are. Or, if you've had to move a bit to hit the return, Casually, you will return to your original position because once you've sent the ball back to your opponent, that's the end of the return of serve, right? Or is it? And when it's your turn to take your practice serves, you toss the ball, hit your serve, and then you simply repeat because once you've completed your service motion, the serve is over. Or is it? I'm David Popeil, your host for Cross Court Rabbit Complete Tennis. And here is the central message of this video. We should not think of the serve or the return of serve as ending with the strike of the ball and the completion of the stroke. Rather, we should conceptualize both as ending only when we have started moving towards the next position from which we intend or expect to hit. For the return, that means that when practicing the return, once we strike the ball, we should move either towards the center of the baseline, if we intend or expect our next shot to be a ground stroke, or towards the net, if we intend to play a volley. Now, and only now, with the Two or three steps you take after you strike the ball is the return of serve ending. As for the serve, it only ends once you have either hopped back behind the baseline or started moving a couple of steps towards the net if you intend to serve and volley. This is not really different from practicing other aspects of the game. Optimal practice of ground strokes includes moving towards the ball, then moving back at least a few feet into a ready position, and then immediately to the next ball. There's no break in movement once you hit the stroke. And when you practice volleying, you don't want to hit the volley and just stand there. You want to keep moving your feet and quickly hit another volley, having returned to your original volleying position. Post-strike movement should be thought of as an integral part of the serve and the return of serve, and consequently should be included when you are warming up at the beginning of a match and when you are practicing the serve and return. So, when your opponent is warming up his or her serve, don't just hit the ball back and stand there. Hit back and shuffle a couple of steps, steps towards the center of the baseline, or take two steps forward if you intend to rush the net. Of course, you can do both. The point is that the return isn't complete until you've begun moving towards your next position. And when you're warming up or practicing your serve, Add a step or two forward if you intend to rush the net or hop back to behind the baseline if that's where you intend to play from. Or you can alternate between the two. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up below the screen. And if you're not already subscribing and would like to receive cross-court rabbit videos as they issue, 
click the little red subscription button in the bottom right of the screen. Any comments you may have, please leave them in the comments section below. And finally, as always, I want you to keep playing and enjoying the greatest of all games. I'm David Popeil, and I'll see you again soon.